Hi guys, welcome to part three of the online music theory course. Um, in the previous chapter, we talked about the notes, uh, the names of the notes and all those pitches. We talked about the half steps and semitones that gives us basically 12 tonal sounds in music, uh, which includes the sharps and flats, and then our, our natural notes, our white keys on the keyboard um, and the guitar. What we're going to cover now is going to be a little bit into the rhythmic part of music theory. And this is going to talk about what the value of the notes are, timing-wise, and what types of notes are there. If you remember the last couple of videos, I was putting on the staff just kind of a, you know, a circle indicating, you know, what pitch that is, which in this case would be an E. But this really isn't a proper note or a type of note. So we're going to cover basically five of the most common uh, types of notes and, and their time duration. Because in music, of course, we play things maybe a little bit longer, some things are played shorter, and even sometimes there's rests in music to where there's no music at all. Those all are going to be indicated by these types of notes. What we're going to do, we're going to talk about this in a time signature and the time signature is this double number over here, and it says 4-4. Four, four. We're going to do a whole chapter on what time signatures are, but for right now, it's important to know that we're looking at it in 4-4, four, four, which is the most common time signature that we have in music. Sometimes you'll actually see it on a music staff written as a C, standing for the word common time. And that's going to be really important to understand that these values can change according to the time signatures. But again, for our purposes today, we're going to be looking at it in 4-4. Four, four. So here are five types of notes. You can see here there's different shapes. Uh, there's some have stems on them, some have little flags on them, and we're going to go through each one. So we're going to start with the largest note that you would be dealing with in music, and that's going to be the whole note. The whole note looks pretty much like a circle with no stem on it, and the value of how long you would actually hold that note would be for four beats. Once again, this is written in common time. So if you were to see this G come up as a whole note, you would play that and you'd be holding it for four beats. Okay? Next note we would have what's called the half note. Okay? The half note is going to look similar, but it has the stem on there. It's hollowed out and has the stem on top, and that half note is worth two beats. So if you were to play that particular note, you would hit it, and it would sustain for two beats, whatever the tempo is in that particular song. Moving on, we have also what's called the quarter note. The quarter note is similar looking to the half note, but it is dark end. This is a pretty common one that you might have seen in music, and that is our quarter note. That is worth one beat. So if we're playing to a beat of music, that quarter note, you would get one per beat. Each time that beat hit, it's only worth one beat. So those are a few of them. Now what we can do is take a look at the next one down and that is going to be what's called the eighth note. That is going to be worth one half of the quarter note and it has a flag on it to indicate that that's, that's an eighth note. Sometimes you might see eighth notes beam together. And what that would look like is if you had two notes that were eighth notes, generally we wouldn't put two flags on it, we would just beam them together like that. And those are each worth a half. So if the beat of the song is going, these would only be worth a half a beat. One and two and note, 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 note. Okay, that's what these eighth notes would come into play with. The next one is going to be even a shorter division of the time, and that's going to be our 16th note. The 16th note is written with two flags, and the same way that we beam together the 8th notes, a lot of times when we're putting together a series of 16th notes, let me put four around here, we would beam them, but we'd throw a double beam on there to account for the 16th note. That is worth one quarter of the beat. So if the beat is going one E and a, one E and a, two E and a, you would get four of these notes per beat. And again, we'll get a little more into time signatures and rhythm, rhythm as we go, but when we talk about music and we say that we know we have five lines 
and we have four spaces, and we want to now put together a melody, we know that sometimes a melody may hit a note, wait a few beats, play a few more notes, and that's how we're going to be able to say what the duration is of each note as we go. So this is going to be one that we may say, hey, we're going to put a quarter note here. Okay, let's say we want to put, that's a G. We want to put a half note here. And let's say we want to put a couple of eighth notes here. This is how it would be written on a staff music like that. Okay, now with the staff, we actually will be dividing this up into bars. And each bar we're going to talk about in our next segment in regards to time signature, but this will be a line that we indicate. Because in music, we aren't going to just have all these lines and all the notes put together. We'll actually have a bar line to separate each of these as we go through. So these are the types of notes that you may run into. Now also, there's a couple of uh, times that you might go a little bit faster, a little bit more uncommon, but there is also a 30 second note that could come up in, in here. It would have three flags or it'd be beamed together three times, a little bit less common. So these would be the types of notes you would get um, and the most commonly used. I wanna talk about another part though of notes. It's not playing, it's gonna be our rests. Sometimes in music, we want to have another instrument play a particular part, which means we are gonna stop playing for a moment and we need to indicate how long we want that stop to be. So there's symbols for the types of rests that we may want to do. So if you look over here, it kind of coordinates right with the whole note. This is our marking for a whole note rest, which means we're not going to play a note for four beats, silence for four beats. Um, half is gonna look like that. That's gonna be a, when you see a marker on music like this, that has that little top part, that's gonna be a worth two beats of silence in common time. The chord note kind of looks like a little squiggly three <laughs> kind of symbol you'll see. That's worth one beat of a rest. An eighth note kind of looks like a flag there that's on. That will be a half of a beat of a rest. And then your 16th note, will be just similar as well, has a double flag on there. Again, sometimes it's tricky to remember all these things and that's why music theory is something that has to be worked on and practiced and, um, and it's not about just seeing it once and remembering it. It's about you know kind of analyzing other sheets of music, learning a piece of music and working with your teacher as you kind of go through these beats. I wanna say one thing that I personally do to help me memorize um, uh, these two top rests out here, the ones that could be kind of confusing. I've had a lot of students where, you know, the underneath block and the top one, which one is it? Is that a whole, is that a half? How I remember it sounds kind of funny, but to me, this looks like a sidewalk and then there's a hole going in. So if you were walking and it dips into a hole, whole note. Um, I think of, this to me looks like a hat, like a top hat. And I think of the word hat and having that HA beginning there. Great way to kind of remember exactly what those rests may be. The eighth notes are kind of easy to remember because it has the flags kind of on there. And then the chord note is the strangest little three looking squiggly that you may kind of see as you come up on music. So hopefully that helps uh, that memorization process. But again, it does take a little bit of time to kind of go through a piece of music and, you know, learn that and put it into application with whatever instrument or, you know, if you're singing or playing uh, guitar or piano into that. So this is the segment in regards to notes, the types of notes you run into, how to place them on the staff, and, uh, and the duration of those notes. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.